what is the natural history of renal artery stenosis? When there is a stenosis of greater than 75%, 39% of these progress to complete occlusion in the next 12 months. When there is a stenosis of 50 to 75%, 10% of these over the next 12 months will progress to complete occlusion. Intervene if the stenosis is 75% or more regardless of hypertension. In 50 to 75% stenosis, the progression is slow and what they need is follow-up. Revascularization is not helpful if the kidney size is less than 9 cm because there will be no viable global line. If the serum creatinine is more than 4 mg, the chances of recovery is also remote. If there is no patent renal artery, again the procedure may not be worth doing. When you do an angiogram, remember the right renal artery is anterior and the left is posterior. So in an AP view, it may appear to look okay, but actually the osteos will not be well demonstrated. So, one will have to oblique the, the C-arm of the cat lab to ensure that you can see the origins properly. You assess the degree of stenosis, the length of the stenosis, the size of the vessel beyond the post dilatation. Decide whether it is atherosclerotic, autoarthritis or fibromuscular dysplasia. The reason in, in atherosclerotic lesions you would have to stent. In autoarthritis you would ideally use a cutting balloon and fibromuscular dysplasia you would just use a plain balloon angioplasty. What's a cutting balloon? A cutting balloon is a balloon which when opened has fine blades which would make a nick in the endothelium of the vessel allowing us to have a controlled dissection and stretching preventing uncontrolled dissection which can sometimes cause occlusion of the vessel. So this is how a balloon would look and this is a cutting balloon from Boston Scientific. Take the example of this case presented with hypertension absent right femoral and right brachial pulses, her ESR was 60, her renal function was normal. She was started on pulse therapy with cyclophosphamide. Angiography was performed after the first pulse when the ESR came to 28 millimeters in the first hour. The angiography shows bilateral severe stenosis of the renal artery with associated disease in the left subclavian. This is the result after bilateral cutting balloon angioplasty and uh, the patient blood pressure came down close to normal following the procedure. Like mentioned, the advantage is precise positioning and better radial strength. How do you do a procedure? This is a renal artery stenosis. You would hook the osteo with a guiding catheter or a coaxial technique where you have a guiding catheter and a diagnostic inside it. You will pass the lesion with a wire and if the stenosis is very tight you will do a pre-dilatation and you will remove the balloon. Now this technique of taking the guiding catheter over the balloon was described before we had the coronary wires in the balloon and one doesn't do it anymore. Then you take out the balloon, place the stent across the stenosis and inflate the balloon and the stent in such a way that at least a millimeter of the stent is in the outer. How do you prepare the patient? Do a cardiac evaluation, make sure his diabetes is under control. He should be on clopidogrel at least three days prior to the procedure. Patient should be well hydrated and uh, it is best to probably skip the morning dose of antihypertensive. For the next 24 to 48 hours, antihypertensives are given based on the BP. Look at the groin for a hematoma. Look for renal dysfunction. 
what does the hardware require? You'll require a sheet and a guiding catheter that would match the stent you plan to choose. You require a long sheet if you're coming from the arm. You require the right wires. You require the right stents, the balloons for pre-dilatation, and of course a white connector that allows you to have uh, the stent in the guiding catheter. The two types of systems available is the over the wire when the wire comes all through the catheter from the hub to the tip and the monorail where the wire would exit in after the first 30 centimeters and today this is the device we all tend to use. Take an example case. There's a patient who had a 2 centimeter stenosis extending from the ostium of the left renal artery and you can see the beautiful result after angioplasty and stenting for the stenosis on the left side. This is a patient 48 years old comes with a history of anuria with recurrent attacks of flash pulmonary edema. He had uh, acute MI six months back his LV is poor and he's got multivessel disease which is uh, cannot be operated upon. He's a heavy smoker and admission is uh, right kidney 7.7, .7, left is 12.4. He came with a creatinine of 8.3 but on dialysis came to 2.2. This is the MR angiogram showing an infrarenal aortic occlusion, a critical stenosis of the left renal artery and an absent right renal artery. And this is the end result after angioplasty and stenting. And the patient's creatinine came down to 1.4. He does not have a single attack of rash pulmonary edema. And this was a life-saving procedure. Here's a patient, carbon dioxide angiography, showing bilateral renal artery and this is the pre-dilatation and the stent and the same on the opposite side and the end result shows good results for both renal arteries and the patient did well. So this is how it is before and this is after. Incidentally the patient also had a critical stenosis of the infrarenal outer which is also stented. Let's show you some difficult axis. This is seen in this lady with the critical stenosis of the ostium and there is a hypertrophic plaque all around the ostium. The outer above that is diffusely diseased. So this is what you mean when a coaxial we have a diagnostic catheter with the appropriate shape which is taken through the guiding catheter. Then the lesion is wired and then we stent the lesion. The stent is seen within the outer because of the large plaque that is protruding around the ostium into the It's a 67 year old male, poorly controlled hypertension on multiple drugs with a creatinine that is 2.4. The angiogram shows a totally occluded renal artery on the left and a critical stenosis on the right to the CO2 angio. This is the stent across this is after dilatation and this is the angiogram following the procedure showing excellent results. Finally, stenosis of the transplant kidney should also be treated and the easier lesions should treat in most occasions. Here is a patient who came with hypertension and drop in renal function of several months after his transplant. The angiogram shows a very tight stenosis at the site of the anastomosis. And this is the pre-dilatation, and this is the stent across the lesion, and this is the end result following, following angioplasty and stenting. So that is the end of this lecture. Thank you.